last is pretty easy. Uh, before this, you're gonna need some preparation gloves, maybe some non powder nitro gloves. You're gonna also need a pasta maker or a pasta cutter. You're gonna need a bench scraper, that's for scraping up the flour and stuff that sticks to the uh, surface, and a rolling pin. So starting off, most people like to use this flour bowl thing that they spread out on the table and they put their eggs in and they kind of mix it up. I don't like to do that. I feel like that's a waste of flour. So what I like to use is a bowl. So I find it easier to work with the pasta when the eggs are warm. So what you can do is take some warm water, put it into a bowl, a large mixing bowl or whatever you have, and put your two eggs into the bowl and let those eggs warm up for a little bit. It only takes about 10 minutes. Once your eggs are warm, go ahead and crack them open into a bowl and beat them up with a pinch of salt. So now you want to take out a measuring cup and you want to scoop out well, one cup of all-purpose flour at a time but you don't want to dump all of the flour in at the same time. What you're going to do is you're going to pour in a little bit at a time, just keep the rest in your cup and then you're going to mix. And then you're going to pour and you're going to mix and you're going to pour and you're going to mix until you get a firm dough ball, something that's pliable, it's kind of like Play-Doh, it's not wet, it's, it's not going to be tacky or anything like that. If it's not tacky, if it's not sticking to your hand, you know you did it right. So at this point of the process, we're going to have to knead the dough. And one thing about kneading this dough in particular is nothing but eggs and salt in this. There's no water whatsoever. So while you're kneading it, you're going to realize very quickly that the dough is going to be stiff and start toughening up on you. But don't worry. It's going to lighten back up. We're going to allow this to rest a little bit in the refrigerator before we actually flatten it out and use it. So one of the things that I do suggest if you never need dough before is to start lifting weights. All right, so at this point, you can just go ahead and start playing with your dough ball. You can throw it around, you can twist it and stuff. You can do whatever you want to it because it's not sticky, it's not tacky. You notice it's not sticking to my hand or anything like that. That means you did it right. And if it is sticking, and if you're not able to do any of those things with it, then uh, you might want to start back over or try to add some more flour to it and knead it into the dough ball. Oh uh, yeah, and go ahead and let it rest for about five minutes covered. Now one of the things about this stuff is once you uncover it and you start working with it, this stuff starts to dry pretty fast, or at least it starts to dry on the outside of the dough ball. So you may have to knead it a little bit before you get started, but if you did it right and you covered it to let it rest, it'll still be pretty pliable and firm the way I have it here. All right, so in order to get started, you wanna go ahead and grab your bench scraper or at least a sharp knife, and you're gonna to wanna to cut this into fours. It's easier to work with smaller pieces than it is one big gigantic piece because it's not going to be too wide for the rolling pins of the pasta maker to catch it. It's going to become way too long for you to actually work with and stuff is going to start clumping up. It's going to start sticking together and you don't want that. So what you're going to do now is to go ahead and take your rolling pin, just have it set to the side and press it out into a nice small flat disc. You don't have to press it out too much with your hands and trust me, you're not going to be able to this stuff is... It's built up way too much gluten and it's gotten way too much uh, elasticity for you to actually press that completely out with your hand. So you're going to have to use a roller pin to at least get this started off. Go ahead and start flattening this out. You don't have to do way too much and trust me, you, you, you really don't want to. And uh, just to get a prep and ready for the uh, pasta machine. Okay, so pasta machines are actually pretty simple and they're kind of inexpensive. They're only 25 bucks. 
Uh, comes with a crank, comes with an adjustable knob. It also comes with uh, two different styles of cutters. It's uh, Linguini and one is uh, spaghetti. And you can uh, take the same crank, pop it into the side of the other ones and use that as well. And then this is the main deal here that makes it, that turns it into a multitasker instead of a unitasker. You can just take that piece off and you can actually do things like croissants or cinnamon rolls or something like that. It's kind of a weird deal, but once you start working with it, you'll get used to it, so you can kind of figure out how to use it. Uh, I'm going to stick to my traditional rolling pin, but just those ideals, to me, it, it, it makes it work for me. I, it, it makes the 25 bucks a lot more worth it. Now, you can also buy uh, what they have is uh, pasta cutters. Like I said in the beginning of the video, those things are only about five bucks, maybe eight bucks. They're not that expensive at all, so if you're a do-it-yourselfer that's, you know, like to make pasta, but you don't want to spend the 25 bucks for that pasta machine, you can literally just take a rolling pin, flat it out to, uh, I don't know how thin or thick you will like it, but, you know, and then this pasta cutter is like a pizza cutter, except it has multiple blades on it, and you can just roll over it and get your pasta that way. Once you have your pasta machine secure, go ahead and start rolling this out on your lowest setting, which is on mine's a 7, it may be 8 on yours. And just go ahead and roll it out and keep rolling until you feel comfortable with it to go ahead and start lowering it down to 6 and then 5. And you want to go ahead and keep cranking to the very next number. Don't try to skip the numbers or anything like that. You can actually risk ruining the dough or cutting it a piece or it may even start gumming up on the side of your rollers and you definitely don't want that. These things are hard to clean. All right, so I stopped at number two on my pasta machine. I'm pretty comfortable with that thinness. And then just take some flour and sprinkle it on top of your pasta dough and just kind of spread it out. This is going to help keep the pasta from clumping together while you're cutting it in the pasta machine. It's also going to help it separate it. And one thing that you want to be careful with, I don't know if you can see that crease on the side of my pasta dough. I accidentally folded it over at the same time while I was pressing it out. And I'm doing my best to ignore that I did that and I'm just going to cut it anyway. Alright, so I got a super long piece and what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my bench scraper. And I'm going to just kind of clean it up a little bit just for the camera. Other than that, I really don't care. And I'm going to cut off the ends that's round it so I can get a, uh, a more even um, noodle, I'm going to say. I, I guess that's the best way to say that. But yeah, just to get a more even noodle all around. And I'm going to go ahead and cut it in half because if I don't, I'm going to get this extra long noodle that I really don't want. So I'm going to cut it in half just to make it a little bit easier to work with and to uh, go ahead and put that through my Linguini cutter. Now I'll just take the crank out, pop it into the very first slot that's on the cutter side. That's going to be the Linguini cutter. Pick up your pasta, dust a little flour on it before you get started. I've already pre-done that. And just start feeding it through the cutter. Be very careful not to fold the pasta dough because it will cut that way. Alright, so once you get that all done and covered in flour, you can actually make yourself spaghetti as well. But this, I find that the spaghetti you need maybe a drier pasta dough. I'm not exactly sure. It's a lot harder to separate, and I actually recommend cooking this immediately once you get done. I wouldn't dry this at all. Just go ahead and cook it. But it does shreds up nice, like you see here. It shreds up nice, and it actually does separate in the pot. So you can actually hang this stuff up to dry. It may take about an hour for it to dry. You can actually cook it fresh and it only takes about a minute to cook. Uh, once you dry it and cook it, it will take about maybe four to five minutes for it to be al dente. So the option is up to you. I enjoy fresh pasta. So whenever I make a pasta dish, I actually really do go through this entire process just to make a pasta dish. But anyway, though, guys, thanks for watching. This is it. Uh, for more recipes, check out quartercups.com. And you can check out more videos from us right here, youtube.com slash quartercups. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and please check out more. <music>